Thank you. Would you rise to honor the gospel, please? Um, the gospel for this All Saints Sunday is the fifth chapter of Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I try to be sensitive to typographical mistakes in the church folder, in the church newsletter. Typos, we call them. For instance, in the Lutheran Church, we call this a communion table. In the Catholic Church, they still usually call this the altar. Now, the altar comes from the Old Testament times when you sacrificed animals on this. An altar is spelled this way. All right? Sometimes bulletins have it this way. Now, it's true, if you place your sins on this altar, God will alter your life with forgiveness. It does work. Unlike what the bulletin of a previous church of mine once said, the welcome area gathering after worship is the hospitality time, not the hostility time. <laughs> and I have to apologize to former members of a former church of mine, Don and Diana, because before their wedding, the bulletin was supposed to say that they request your presence at their worship wedding, and instead it came out, they request your presence. And I apologize for a former church of mine in which the bulletin invited members to go with me, knocking on doors of new residents in the community who were not yet afflicted with any church. <laughs> the word is supposed to be, of course, affiliated. Well, in the early days of publishing, Bible typos were common. There's an 18th century version of the Bible called the Sinner's Bible. And there, the Sixth Commandment read, Thou shalt commit adultery. That's also the Bible that had a misprint of that story where Jesus is with the Samaritan woman at the well. You know, the woman who had many husbands and many boyfriends. And the correct version is, Jesus said, Go and sin no more. This version said, Go and sin on more. <laughs> Today, we read the Beatitudes. Chapter 5, verse 9 of Matthew is, Blessed are the peacemakers. If you've ever seen the Monty Python movies, there's one wonderful old movie in which they get it wrong. And his troop of players go out and bless the cheesemakers they can find. But actually there was a Bible that had a typo. And it said, Blessed are the placemakers. Actually, that's not a bad thing. How do you make place for God in your life? Now, what actually is kind of shocking about all these Beatitudes is they sound like they're all full of typos. They, they sound so counterintuitive. They, they don't make sense in our modern high-pressure world. Blessed are the meek. The meek? 
Really? Who wants to be meek? The only way we can see these words clearly, I think, is through the lens of God's kingdom. Actually, there are no typos here. The Greek word for meek actually means manageable, self-controlled. It was a word used for a wild horse that's been broken to the bit and the bridle. All the energy is still there, all the dynamic value of the horse. But now it's controlled. It can be ridden. It's focused. And now it has great value. The meek are not quiet, passive people. They're strong people who are focused. People who reject the power-hungry and violent ways of the world. They can live productive lives. Even in the Old Testament, fiery Moses, one of the most fiery men of the Bible, was called the meekest of all people because he was so focused and in control. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Billy Graham says that we should translate this as blessed are the humble in spirit. It means not deluded by pride. I think of those of us who are retired. We're not striving to fight the corporate battles anymore. People who are retired often are unencumbered and not deluded enough to think that we're masters of the universe, completely in control of our lives. This is a spiritual simplicity. It's really a wonderful quality to have in this modern world of terrorism and international tension and economic uncertainty. It means that we're dependent on God, first and foremost, and that we're not just striving for our own sake. It means that the Lord will reward us with the gift of his kingdom. Blessed are the poor, the simple in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. I seldom see such an outpouring of love as when a person dies. Often it's in the hospital room where there are hugs and tears and people tell stories about their loved one. Sometimes it's at the funeral where people give eulogies. It's as if they've discovered their loved one and their God as never before. And from the stories often comes laughter. On ordinary days, we, we kind of live on the surface of life, and our days are seldom memorable. But in death, emotions run high. We are seldom so filled with life as when we grieve. Only the heart that is broken, broken open, can let love in. You see, these Beatitudes are not a description of human feelings. When Jesus says that the disciples are blessed, he's not saying that they're necessarily happy to be reviled and persecuted because you follow the Lord might be a blessing, but it's not going to make you very cheerful. The nine Beatitudes which Jesus proclaims in this reading are so much more than nine be happy attitudes. Stated this way, it's clear that the blessings of the Beatitudes are not about us, not about how we feel. Instead, those blessings are about what God has done for us. And with that perspective in mind, we can get a clearer sense of what Jesus is talking about when he tells his disciples that they are blessed. What he's saying is that these former fishermen are blessed because they're experiencing the coming of the kingdom of God. You see, you and I are saints, not just when we get to heaven. We're saints now, because we live in the kingdom of God, if only we can sense it and see it. Jesus is saying that this kingdom is reshaping their reality. No longer will the meaning of life be defined by the culture of their little town of Capernaum, or the expectations of their families, or the size of the fish that they catch in the Sea of Galilee. From now on, the great reality of their existence will be that kingdom of God, the blessing of God that comes to all people who make a place for God in their lives. And stated that way, 
that typo that read, blessed are the placemakers, is really insightful. Blessed are those who know that God has made a place for them in God's kingdom. And blessed are you who make a place for God in your lives. Blessed are you when you take the time to read the Bible, to pray, to look at your loved ones and try to see God there. Blessed are you when you take the energy to look around, look at the faces around, and recognize the presence of God there. The blessing is that we become centered on God. And we have a quiet sense of fulfillment. The Bible's Greek word for blessed is makarios. Makarios. That was actually the nickname in Jesus' time for the island of Cyprus. You don't hear much about Cyprus because Cyprus is a quiet place most of the time. But the blessing of Cyprus is on that island, people had all that they needed. It had wood. It had good fishing. It had fields for grain. It had minerals. You didn't need to leave the island to find success in life. All the stuff that we try to accumulate, the new cars, and the new titles, the new trips to exotic places, those are all extra. They were a bonus. In the biblical world, being blessed means that we're on an island that is God, that we have all that we really need. To be blessed means we're not coveting for more. One of the best insights I've ever heard about being blessed was offered by the rock star Bono. Remember Bono, the group U2? Bono was asked by President Bush, 43, to give a sermon at the National Prayer Breakfast about 12 years ago. Think about that. A conservative president asking a rock star to preach. It sounds a little bit like a typo right there. Bono spoke of, his, of the beatitude, blessed are the poor. And he talked about the ministry he was doing in Africa. He was asking the people at that prayer breakfast, join in that ministry. Help the poor of Africa. At one point, he told his own faith story. He said, he told about meeting the wise man years ago. And he said, in countless ways, I was always seeking God's blessing. I was saying, you know, I have this new song. Look after it, Lord. I have a family. Look after them. I have this idea. And then the wise man said, stop. He said, stop asking God to bless what you're doing. Get involved in what God is doing, because it's already blessed. Well, said Bono, God is with the poor and the grieving. And that, I believe, is what God is doing. And that's what I needed to do. The challenge for us is to open ourselves to God's kingdom. The challenge is to quiet ourselves and to see those times that we are, are beaten down or grieving or gentle or hungering for justice, to see those times as a window through which God's Spirit enters us. Make God center place in your life. Blessed are those who open that window to the kingdom of God, says Jesus. Blessed are the place makers, those who make a place for God. And that's no typo. Amen. Quiet us, Lord. Center us in you. Help us to see in the faces around us the other saints of your kingdom, and help us to grow into that image of Jesus in our own lives. Amen.